Hello and welcome to today's lesson on further electromagnetic induction, which is part of the magnetic fields topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at applying Lenz's law and Faraday's laws to conductors. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should be able to understand and explain Lenz's law and Faraday's law, calculate the EMF induced in a coil rotating uniformly, and detail how the induced EMF in a conductor relates to its magnetic flux linkage, which is part of the AQA A-level physics specification for magnetic fields in electromagnetic induction. Now, if we consider a conductor placed in a magnetic field, if there's relative motion between the conductor and the permanent magnetic field, an EMF is induced in the conductor. Now, we wrote this down in a previous lesson by saying induced EMF is equal to the change in flux linkage divided by the change in time. But we can further amend this equation to show the direction of the induced EMF in the conductor. Now, the induced EMF will always be produced in the opposite direction to the change in flux linkage that causes it. Now this idea is Lenz's law and we can change Faraday's uh, law of induction by adding a negative sign to the equation. Now this law must be memorized along with Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So for electromagnetic induction we must always consider Lenz's law which states the induced EMF will always be produced in the opposite direction to the change in flux linkage that causes it. So if the change in flux linkage is caused by the conductor moving down, the induced EMF is produced upwards in the conductor. Now, it's important to note that this means the magnetic field is produced in the conductor as it's now moving. Now, this means that the wire will resist its movement to cause the change in the flux linkage as the poles of the conductor and the permanent magnet will repel each other. So this means that the production of EMF provides a resistance to its own production. This naturally limits the largest value of EMF possible in a generator because if the EMF was in the same direction as the change that causes it you would have a violation of the conservation of energy in our universe because the production of an of EMF will cause further attraction between the conductor and the magnet if the uh, if the EMF was produced in the same direction as the change in flux linkage that caused it. So therefore this would speed up the conductor as there'd then be an attraction and it will cause a greater change in magnetic flux and produce a greater EMF. So what you would have is you'd have a positive feedback cycle, which would mean eventually infinite EMF will be produced and the conductor will travel at an infinite speed. So this will create energy in our universe, which we know is impossible. So it has to be to conserve energy in our universe that the change in e the change in flux linkage and the direction of the induced EMF will be in opposite directions. Now Lenz's law has many applications such as back EMF in motors. Now a motor works as a current passes through a coil and this makes the coil an electromagnet. The electromagnet interacts with the permanent magnet around it and begins to spin. Now, this spinning okay, means that different sides experience different forces because the currents are in opposite directions. Now, this is important to note that as the as the as the motor is also a conductor passing through a magnetic field as it spins, it has a change in magnetic flux linkage. And because there's a change in flux linkage, the motor will have an EMF induced in it. However, Lenz's law states that the EMF is produced in the opposite direction to the rotation of the coil. So we've got a back EMF because the EMF is in the opposite direction to the EMF that's causing the rotation. So this means the back EMF is slowing the spin of the motor. So Lenz's law ensures that motors have a top revolution speed, have a top uh, higher spin speed, because the faster it spins, the greater the back EMF induced, so the more resistance that there is, so as a result it limits how quickly that motor can spin. So let's have a look at a situation. If you drop a magnet through an air and you drop a magnet through a copper pipe, will the magnets fall at different speeds and why? 
Well, a magnet falling through the air will fall quickly, but a magnet falling through a conductor will fall slowly. Now, this is an important idea. A magnet that falls through a conductor, like a copper rod, takes significantly longer to fall. Because as the magnet falls through this copper rod, the conductor, the effect of the magnet moving through that conductor produces a current in this copper rod conductor. Now, this occurs via Faraday's law, as there's relative motion between the magnetic field and the conductor, in this case it's the magnet that is falling, and so forth, therefore creating a motion. So the conductor has a change in magnetic flux linkage which induces an EMF and a current. Now as the copper rod is now carrying a current, it's also an electromagnet, so it produces a magnetic field. But due to Lenz's law, this induced EMF is produced in the opposite direction to the change that causes it. This means the magnetic field is in the opposite direction. So the magnetic field of the electromagnet repulses the magnetic field of the permanent magnet as they're in opposite directions so this will cause repulsion and therefore it will fall slower so as the magnet falls through the copper rod the effect of the magnet moving through a conductor produces a current in that copper rod and the fact that the conductor cutting through the magnetic flux giving a change in magnetic flux can produce a current in the conductor is called the generator or induction effect now if you drop a magnet in the following tubes we've got a glass tube a high resistance iron tube and a low resistance copper tube which magnet will hit the ground the fastest and which ground which will hit the ground the slowest and why well the magnet falling in the glass tube will fall the fastest and the magnet falling in the low resistance copper tube will fall the slowest now in this tube in the glass tube there's no change in magnetic flux linkage because glass is not a conductor so there's no repulsive magnetic field produced that opposes the magnet falling so therefore the magnet will fall freely and under the effect of gravity only but in the low resistance copper tube there is a change in magnetic flux linkage as the copper is a conductor so there is electromagnetic induction in the copper this produces a repulsive magnetic field according to Lenz's law so this will slow the magnet down as it falls now in the high resistance iron tube there's also a change in magnetic flux linkage as iron is a conductor like copper is so there's electromagnetic induction in the iron but because the resistance in iron is higher the same in induced EMF will produce a smaller current, so therefore this repulsive electromagnetic field produced by the iron tube will be smaller, so therefore the magnet can fall faster than the copper as there's a smaller resistance, so there's going to be less of this ma repulsive magnetic field. Now, the generator effect can be observed when a coil rotates uniformly in a magnetic field. Now, it's important to note that we know flux linkage n thi is equal to B A N cos theta. Now, this angle theta changes as the coil rotates. Now, we define this angle as the angular difference between the conductor and the magnetic field lines. Now, the, norm, the normal is used to define this angular difference and is placed at the center of the conductor. So, we know the angle that changes. This, this angle will change as the coil rotates. So let's just consider what goes on. So we know that uh, the amount of flux cut is equal to the flux linkage, which is equal to n thi, which is equal to B A N cos theta. But as the coil rotates, theta changes, so the flux linkage varies sinusoidally between plus B A N and minus B A N. Now this change occurs as the direction of the conductor changes during the rotation. So we can actually display this in a graphical format as shown it goes from positive BAN to negative BAN, as shown in this particular annotation. Now, it's also important to note that this induced EMF is out of phase with the magnetic flux linkage by 90 degrees. Now, this occurs as the change in magnetic flux linkage produces the EMF, so the gradient of the magnetic flux linkage graph is the value of the induced EMF graph. So we can also say this because one graph is, is contains a sign term and the other graph contains a cosine term. Now, let's just delve into the equation n phi equals B A N cos theta in a bit more detail, because how fast theta changes depends on the angular speed omega. Okay, and we know that theta equals omega t from the periodic motion section of this course. So we can substitute that into the equation above. So we now know that n phi is equal to b a n cos theta, which is equal to b a n cos omega t. Now, we can also now consider this into the induced EMF equation because we now know that uh, 
induced EMF is equal to the change in flux linkage over time, so it's equal to BAN omega sine omega t. Now, the reason where this, this comes from is the idea that the differential of cos omega t is equal to omega sine omega t, which is due to the product rule. Now, if you don't do A-level mathematics, you don't need to know where that comes from, only appreciate that it does occur. Now, this shows us that the induced EMF is the largest when the conductor is parallel to the magnetic field, because at this point, uh, sine theta is equal to 90, as shown on this diagram, so therefore it's equal to 1. So this shows us that the maximum induced EMF for a rotating conductor is BAN omega, because sine omega t has gone to 1 now. Now this equation is given to you in your examination book. Now, this shows us that the induced EMF is the largest when the conductor is parallel to the magnetic field. Now, this occurs as when the conductor moves to this alignment, the conductor has the greatest change in the magnetic flux cut per second. So, if we consider the following idea, okay, that induced EMF is caused by a change in the number of field lines being cut, not just the total number of field lines being cut. So, when you go from something like 89 to 90 to 91, okay, there's the greatest EMF is induced because the, the in this idea the magnetic flux linkage is the smallest possible value however the change can be the largest possible value so whilst the value of magnetic flux is small the change in magnetic flux linkage is great now let's look at the other idea we, we know that if the induced EMF is equal to BAN omega sine omega t. This shows us that the induced EMF is zero when the conductor is perpendicular to the magnetic field. This is because sine zero is equal to zero, so sine zero times by BAN omega is going to therefore equal zero. So this is an important idea as because when the conductor moves to this alignment, the conductor has the smallest change in flux lines cut per second. So, remember, induced EMF is caused by a change in the number of field lines being cut, not the total number of field lines being cut itself. So, what we can say is in this alignment, whilst the value of magnetic flux is large, the change in magnetic flux is small. So, when the conductor is perpendicular, the smallest EMF is induced because the magnetic flux linkage is the greatest value, but the change in magnetic flux linkage is the smallest value. Now we can show the process of the induced EMF in graphical form. So this graph shows the change in magnetic flux linkage over time for a rotating coil. So the graph shows us that it follows a cosine curve. Now this makes sense as there's a cos function in the equation, BAN cos omega. So cos theta, my apologies. Now the gradient of this line, the magnetic flux linkage divided by the time, is the induced EMF of the, con of the generator. Now it's important to know Note that if we now consider okay, the induced EMF over time for a rotating coil, this follows a sine curve as there's a sine function in the equation, BAN omega sine omega t. Now, this is the trace which would form on an oscilloscope when measuring the induced EMF in a rotating coil. So the oscilloscope trace can be used to measure the maximum induced EMF, which we can call the peak voltage, or V0. Now, it's also important to note that an oscilloscope trace can be used to measure the maximum induced EMF in both the positive and negative, which is the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. Now, if a conductor is placed in a complete circuit, then an alternating current will flow in the conductor. Now, we can also use this to work out the frequency of the AC produced by considering frequency is equal to 1 over time period, and so therefore, we can measure the time period on our oscilloscope trace and then work out its frequency. Now, the shape of the graph of induced EMF can be altered by changing the speed of rotation or the size of the magnetic field. Now, increasing the speed of rotation will increase the maximum EMF found on the graph, but will also increase the frequency because it's spinning faster. However, increasing the magnetic flux density will also increase the maximum EMF, but will have no effect
effect on the frequency as the frequency is caused by how quickly the coil is spinning. Now, when we compare the two graphs of magnetic flux linkage against time and induced EMF against time, we observe the two values are 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians out of phase. Now, the flux linkage is always ahead of the induced EMF. This occurs as this the change in magnetic flux linkage which produced the induced EMF. Now, it's important to note that the magnetic flux linkage is a cosine curve and the induced EMF is a sine curve. So we know the flux linkage is a maximum at 0 and 180 degrees and a 0 at 90 degrees and 270 degrees, whilst the induced EMF is a maximum at 90 degrees and 270, but 0 at 0 degrees and 180 degrees. So this occurs at the instance of being perpendicular. There's no magnetic flux cut, much like at how a maximum height an object is stationary, and it occurs because at the instance of the conductor being parallel, there's a maximum flux being cut, much like at how equilibrium an object is moving the fastest. So what have we looked at in today's lesson? That we know there's simple experimental phenomena to do with Faraday's and Lenz's law. We know the magnitude of induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of flux linkage, where induced EMF is equal to n, th uh, n change in thigh over change in T. We know applications such as a straight conductor moving in a magnetic field, and we know the EMF induced in a coil rotating uniformly in a magnetic field is BAN omega sine omega T. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we can explain and understand Lenz's law and Faraday's law. We can calculate the EMF induced in a coil rotating uniformly, and we can detail how the induced EMF in a conductor relates to its magnetic flux linkage. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on further, look, further examples of electromagnetic induction, which is part of the AQA A-level physics specification in magnetic fields. And thank you very much for listening to today's lesson. Have a lovely day.